The Biden administration is refusing to call the situation on the U.S.-Mexico border a crisis, but new photos are highlighting the presidency's secrecy and raising concerns. Photos released yesterday show immigrant children in U.S. custody sleeping on mats under foil blankets and separated in groups by plastic partitions. They are believed to be more than 15,000 children in U.S. custody. The photos were released by Representative Henry Cuellar, a Democrat from Texas. Joining us now is Representative Dr. Marionette Miller-Meeks, Republican from Iowa, who was at the U.S.-Mexico border just last week. Representative Miller-Meeks, thank you so much for coming on and great to see you again. Uh, tell us about your visit to the border and what you saw when you were there. Well, it, um, I uh, actually come from Texas originally. That's where my, my family was from, and I still have siblings who live there. So it was interesting to go back to the border in an official capacity. We were at uh, El Paso. We went to uh, visit or tour a, um, a border processing uh, uh, facility, and then also uh, to uh, speak with border agents and also with the uh, leadership of the uh, uh, Customs and Border Patrol Agents Union. Uh, so it was an interesting experience, and there is actually there's disorder at the border due to executive order. This is an executive order of uh, President Biden's. He had made it known through the campaign that the borders would be open, that uh, uh, that uh, migrants uh, should surge the border. So it was known that there would be a surge. It was known that this would occur, but yet they were woefully unprepared. And not only that, uh, the um, in this COVID package that you mentioned earlier, there was no funding for Customs and Border Protection. So their funding right now that they're using to take care of uh, families and unaccompanied minors and single adults, uh, male adults that are supposed to be under age 18, that funding is coming out of their operations budget. So as you um, alluded to, uh, pictures that were shown, there has not been transparency by this administration on what's happening at the border. Uh, let me give you a for instance, there were in February alone over 100,000 uh, uh, migrants uh, crossing through the border, through uh, uh, you know the processing facilities, and there were 40, about 40,000. We were informed that were um, detected but not apprehended, and then there are also those that were neither detected nor apprehended. These individuals are coming across; they're being brought by the cartels. This is a huge money-making operation to the millions of dollars a month. And if you think about 100,000 in a month, uh, our legal immigration system only permits 1 million uh, each year to come into our borders. So this is a, you know, you could see that within a year, we will have more than uh, coming across our country illegally that come into our country legally. So um, there are children as uh, young as one age, they said, that were left at the border, dropped off at the border, um, and then they have pinned to their shirt or written on the back of their shirt a phone number that's supposed to be called. I can't even imagine being a, a one-year-old child or the parent of a one-year-old child dropped off at the border, not knowing anyone, not even being able to speak, and then, uh, you know, being cared for by these, you know, compassionate border uh, border patrol agents who are doing everything they can. Also, there's not testing. We specifically asked this of uh, Secretary Mayorkas at a Homeland Security uh, hearing that we had last week. Um, they are not being tested. So these individuals come, they uh, do some uh, questionnaires, they temperature screen. Uh, they're in the facility. They're supposed to be there less than 72 hours, but it's exceeding 72 hours now because they, uh, they have to be then um, go to HHS and um, and ask questions, call their sponsors. But think about it. Uh, some of the sponsors are reliable NGOs. Some of them are not. We don't know where these children are going. We don't know if the adults with them are actually their parents or their biological parents. Uh, we know that some of these children end up um, into uh, you know human trafficking and sex trafficking. So the situation is a horrible situation. And it starts with leadership at the top who um, put forward a message that uh, there should be a surge. February is not the time for the surge typically. The surge usually, the biggest excursion typically is in April or May. So if this is happening in February, it exceeds what happened in uh, 2020. It also is now in excess of what happened in uh, the surge in 2019. So it's just tragic what's going on at the border. Yeah, and we have probably less than a minute left, but I really want to get to this next question. Uh, the other really big story happening right now, sort of in your world, the attempt by some Democrats to overturn the results of your election in Iowa. What's the latest on that? What can you tell us? 
Well, think about fairness. We won on election night. We won at the 24 county canvas. We won the three uh, person bipartisan recount was certified by the state of Iowa in a five member bipartisan executive council. Our opponent had the opportunity to, to go to the courts in Iowa, skipped over the courts and went directly to Congress. And now that the committee is set up, they're taking up her petition and have put the onus on us to prove why uh, 22 ballots that they're bringing up uh, uh, were invalid. Uh, and so it's the onus is on us to prove that. And, um, you know, she said herself in a video interview with uh, one of the news stations in Iowa that they skipped over the courts because they had to go to Congress to get the results they need. And in the brief that was filed by her attorney, Mark Elias, yesterday, he actually says in the brief that the committee should use all of their discretion to depart from Iowa law. So people should be outraged. We can't have trust and faith and confidence in our election system if we're willing to violate state laws in order to get the results we need and constantly change the rules. So uh, this is an, uh, you know, an opportunity for all of us to emphasize that state law matters, that rules matter, and you can't just keep changing the rules and keep recounting until you get the result that you need. Yeah, we will keep following this story, too, as well. Representative Marinette Miller-Meeks, uh, Republican from Iowa, thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much, and keep doing what you all do. Have a blessed day and a uh, happy Easter.